Hi all and welcome back to day three's tips of the Ferry House Easter Festival. Just coming off the back of day two there, it was a uh, difficult day. Um, two short price winners I suppose in Get A Bird and Under So, so not exactly making uh, the big bucks there. Bells Hill ran a smasher in the Irish National, just got ran out of it late. Um, would have. He ended up drifting out to 14 to 1, so not a bad each way price. Uh, so he did finish in the top four. Um, apart from that, poor enough out, Sam came third. Brace yourself, second. A fair few pulling up on pretty desperate ground, if I'm being honest, at Ferry House. So we're going to quickly go through the uh, third day's card, starting off with the beginner's chase, which is over two miles. And it does seem like this really has to be Lamarta Lands to win. Here he's zero, over, zero from four over fences and has at times looked a bit of an awkward jumper. But he is the class horse of this race and he's not up against much. Like that, he really should beat. And Mon Monolino, I suppose, is more the uh, unknown. Uh, not a bad hurdler, but has been pulled up the last few times, and you can't take him off the back of that. So it's Lamar's Lamb for me here, four to six. I think actually, if you give a squeak each way to Mighty Stowaway at fourteen to one, who could well improve vastly for his first run over fences. Uh, we go into the Grade 2 Juvenile Hurdle one last year by Project Blue Book of John Quinns. I think I'm going to take, all, take on Saglawi here, despite how impressive he was last time, uh, with Saldier, who ran actually quite a good race in the Triumph Hurdle, despite making uh, various jumping mistakes. Uh, he was fifth that day, only a couple of lengths behind Apple Shakir in fourth. And he could go well here for David Mullins, who's uh, had a Grade One winner on album photo earlier in the year, or earlier in the week, at eleven to four. I think each way play wise, he's not much of an each way price, but this M Sasa, Miss Sasa, I don't know how, how to pronounce this, but for Willie Mullins and Noel Feely at eleven to two, um, one of his maiden hurdle at Cork quite nicely, and the second Park Paddocks has gone on to win very nicely at Cork since. We go on to a very tricky novice handicap hurdle over two six, I think. No, I'm wrong. It's over three miles. It's a great, uh, great B race. I think uh, Speak Easy will go well here for Joseph O'Brien. Joseph O'Brien in good form this year. Yeah, I tipped up Ishka Baha on the first day, who uh, ran a blinder. He's at 9-2. to two, Not disgraced in a grade two last time. Won by Hardline, I think, from Impact Factory. I was there at Nace. He ran on very strongly for third. Uh, big hike up in trip, and on this ground, I suppose that could be a bit of a worry but I think he's sure to go well at 9-2 to two. and I think the each way player is Moy Henna for De Dennis Hogan at 8-1 to one. I'm a big fan of Lacanine leader who uh, Moy Henna was second to only by a length and a bit I'm sorry more than a couple of lengths at uh, Limerick last time in a grade 3 race over 2 miles 6 Lacanine leader as I said earlier in the week I, I put him up or put her up to come second to uh, Lorena and she duly obliged um, so I'm going to respect that form and hopefully Moy Henna will run a good race here at 8-1 to one. Move on to this uh, very trappy handicap hurdle, Grade A, over two miles. These are always difficult races, a bit like um, the Coral Hurdle, and it's the Coral Hurdle winner. Off you go, drops the market at five to one. I'm going to take him on though, and I'm going to take him on in the form of Impact Factor at fifteen to two. My only worry is the Harrington horses haven't seemed to be firing that well. Uh, this week so far but impact factor is a nice sort he came second in that race that speak easy came third in and he tried to make all that day and was just run out of it late on by hardline who's ran another good race behind uh, getterbird today i think he finished third so not a bad little uh, race or not a bad uh, piece of form there and at 15 to 2 he could run run quite nicely maybe at an each way price and at an even bigger e each way price is Graham Partner 12 to 1. I'm a massive fan of Graham Partner. My only issue is he does seem to be a Leopardstown specialist. I've won on him a couple of times at Leopardstown on the flat and over jumps. Uh, he always seems to run well there. Uh, I think he's got a chance here at 12 to 1. Also perhaps Max Dynamite at 14 to 1 if his jumping holds up as I said it in the Cheltenham video for the Carl Hurd, uh, Carl Cup, you know he's if it was over, if if it was a flat race, he'd win this at a hack canter. But at fourteen to one, he perhaps represents a bit of value. We have the ladies' national ha handicap chase here. Uh, Sunset to Rise looks to be a fairly solid favourite here. Nina Carberry booked, got all the right things going on. Up thirteen points, or thirteen up thirteen pounds. For uh, her stable debut for uh, Gordon Elliott, but one with hacks in hand that day, and it wouldn't surprise me if there's still more budge in his mark. I think Skellig Rocks at eight to one is a, is your each way play there, and um, always seems to run a decent enough race without winning. 
We go on to the grade three mares. Chase can't see behind uh, the favourite Asturia here. I know that's another favourite. But uh, Willie Mullins has had a good week so far. And this 6-5 to five, uh, shot pushed Cheltenham mares hurdle winner Benny De Do quite close at Nace there. And Denaria Dezobo was back in third that day. Denaria Dezobo reopposes here at 9-4. to four, But has subsequently been beaten by you can't call her that. And I actually... You know, there's not much swing to think that you can't call her that could well beat Denaria De Zobo again there. So I think it's Astoria for me. Perhaps you can't call her that as your 6-1 to one each wear. The Hunter's Chase, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have much time. Like, I don't really look into the Hunter's Chases. I think you cannot be serious. Um, you know, he, he could go close um, at 9-2. to two. He was a good um, hurdler back in the day. Um, didn't run great last time out, but has won a point to point previous to that and could run, outrun uh, his 5 to 1 odds, Derek O'Connor, an eye catching booking. And finally, we uh, wrap up with the Mayor's Bumper, of which Colreevy at 11 to 8 here looks not a bad, op, uh, not a bad proposition. Uh, won on debut for the Mullins Yard before third in a Mayor's Bumper at the uh, Dublin Racing Festival, of which Relegate won. She went on to win the champion bumper. Second in that race was a horse called Getaway Katie May, who I'm a big fan of for John Queeley. I think she's a very good horse. Um, and he came seventh then in, or she came seventh in the champion bumper. I think that was a very um, good run actually given the circumstances at a big price and at uh, 11 to 8 you might get a bit of value more on the day at 6 to 4 I'd say um, uh, not exactly at a big price but Muscovite here another one for Dennis Hogan I've put up I think 3 from him today so hopefully Dennis has a good day uh, 13 to 2 he looked good when winning his point to point before uh, winning a third bumper quite nicely and the uh, jockey booking of Jamie Codd does look to be significant and I hope you guys have a good final day and uh, I'll be back after this with the Aintree uh, Festival in a week or two time and then on to Punchestown so hopefully a, a pretty big time for the channel if you enjoyed this video please do give it a like subscribe down below and give me a comment on who you fancy best of luck <laughs>